For those of you that are new to this video, welcome to my channel. And for those of you that are here on Tuesday, well, I'm back with the same shirt. In fact, my whole look is the same because I just filmed it. Look at me go with my two videos in one day. Oh my gosh, guys, this is like like the sighting of a blue moon or like a unicorn. Although I would say I would rather see a unicorn, if I'm gonna be completely honest. Hello everyone, I'm here today to do a beginner slash intermediate makeup tutorial for you guys. I'm gonna show you the step-by-steps on how to apply the products, where to apply the products, how much of the product to apply, and all of the questions in between. If you're looking for more specifics on the types of products, how to find the right products for your face, and all of that fun stuff, check out Tuesday's video and hopefully that will answer your question. But today we're gonna to get into this tutorial. If you're more interested in just the intermediate part of the tutorial and you know the basics like foundation, concealer, blush, that kind of stuff, you can Fast forward to like this part of the video right here and that will tell you more of the, the details on how to expand on it, if you will. So I have babbled enough, so without further ado, let's get into this. Now the very first thing I do to my skin, which I have not shown on camera, is to apply a moisturizer. Making sure that your skin is hydrated, whether your skin is oily or dry, is really, really important. So either apply an oil-free serum to your skin that has an SPF in it, or something a little bit heavier if you have drier skin. It's just going to prep your skin, it's going to get it nice and hydrated hydrated and hydrated skin it means that your makeup is going to stay on your face and look a lot better so I applied a serum and a moisturizer earlier today as well as an eye cream and now my skin is ready for foundation and the foundation is going to be applied all over to the face in a very very thin layer you do not want to glom on your foundation because you're going to look like cake face nobody wants to look like cake face and I am going to apply this songs brush I'm gonna do for the beginner stuff I want to make it very very easy so that if you don't want to invest in brushes yet you don't need to and today I think we're gonna go for a more full coverage approach so I'm gonna be using the covergirl outlast stay fabulous foundation plus sunscreen SPF 20 very important and we're gonna apply a small amount to my fingertips about that much because I'm applying it with my hands I want to start in smaller areas so I'm going to start with my cheek and my chin and I'm just going to dot it onto my face. And then you're just going to very, very gently blend it with your fingertips. You don't want to apply a lot of product here. You want to start with a very, very thin layer and then build on that. That is going to look the most natural. That is going to just adhere to the skin better. Apply it to either side of the nose then down to the other cheek. You wanna use a very, very light touch when you're applying this. You don't wanna like rub it into your skin. If you have any obvious areas of any redness or acne spots that you want to cover up, you can certainly just take an extra couple of dabs and apply it specifically to those areas and sort of blend it on top. So you don't need to apply two or three or four layers of foundation all over your face. You can concentrate it on the areas where you feel like you need it most. And I'm gonna apply a little bit to my forehead as well and onto my temples. And once you feel comfortable with the coverage that you have on your skin, you're gonna move on to concealer. And concealer is exactly as the name suggests. It is for concealing very specific target areas of the face. And today I'm gonna to be using two different concealers just because I wanna show you two different formulas and how you can apply them. And then it's up to you whichever one you wanna use. So the first one I talked about in my first beginner's guide video, and it is the Maybelline Instant Age Rewind Treatment Concealer. I love this stuff. If you are suffering from dark circles or really red acne spots, this stuff is amazing. So I'm gonna apply this under the eyes just so you can see how I apply it. I tend to apply it in a triangle under the eyes. So you wanna go a little bit up to the inner corner, just past the inner corner, because there's a lot of darkness in this general area. And then bring it down and then across to the outer corner and then in again. And that's gonna create a nice bright area under the eye, it's going to open up the eye, it's gonna make you look awake, which is the goal here. And you're gonna use your ring finger to tap in the product very gently under the eye area. This is your most gentle finger, so you're gonna apply it the gentlest. Um, this area is very, very delicate, so you want to apply it with with great care. And I'm also looking up while I'm applying it so I get the little area of uh, skin right underneath my eye. And again, same as the foundation, you wanna build with light layers and build as you go, assess what you're doing, and then keep building until you get the appropriate amount of coverage that you're comfortable with. If you have any discoloration on the lids, you can also apply the concealer there. Very, very light layer, like don't apply too much because it's gonna be very obvious. But if you have any spider veins or any discoloration that you want to cover up, you can apply a little bit up here as well. So this is more of a liquidy formula, 
As an alternative, there's also a stick formula, and this one's a really great one I found from Hard Candy. It's their Glamouflage Light Blendable Concealer Duo. So they have a lighter color on one end and a darker color on the other end. So um, you can use the lighter color and just apply it underneath the eyes, just as I did with the Maybelline product, and then switch it to the other side and use this side to apply it all over the face. And it's great because it's almost like a crayon, so it's pretty easy to apply. I am applying it to the outside of the nostril because there tends to be a little bit of redness in that general area for most people. So we're going to blend that in there. And then I have a couple of little red acne spots, just patting it in and blending out the lines. And the next step is blush. And blush is just going to bring back some rosiness to the cheeks since we kind of took a bit of it away with the foundation. It's just going to make you look a little bit more alive. And for beginners, I tend to recommend a cream blush. I know, don't, hold on a second. I promise you this is not as scary as it seems. There are some really great ones out there now that apply beautifully. They're almost a serum-y in texture. They go on really nicely. They take a while to blend in so you have some time to blend it out really nicely and the blush I'm going to be using is by Revlon this is their cream blush this is in the color pinched which I feel is the most beautiful flattering shade and this is how I'm going to apply it so first of all you kind of want to feel along your cheekbone and you want to find that bone so for me it's right here and it ends right here you don't want to bring the blush all the way to the center of the face because that is where you get the whole like clown complexion. You wanna apply a little bit to your finger, whichever one you're most comfortable with. I like using my middle finger personally, but that's just a preference thing. And I'm going to find my cheekbone right back at the hairline, and I'm gonna do a dot, and another dot, and another dot, just along the cheekbone, and then I'm gonna blend it back towards the hairline again. You wanna blend in circular motions very lightly over the skin, and see how it just gives that nice, pretty, like, rosy glow. It's very, very subtle, very natural looking, and very, very pretty. And we're gonna do the same thing with the other side. And now we're going to move on to powder. So once you've applied all of your cream and liquid products to your face, you're gonna wanna set them on the face so they're gonna stay put all day. And that's what a setting powder is for. You can choose a translucent one, you can choose one that has a bit more coverage in it. Again, I got into it in a lot more detail in my Tuesday video in case you're interested. Um, but the one that I'm gonna be using today is by Revlon. This is their Color Stay Powder. As a general rule, if you're just applying a translucent powder, you want to set just the T zone. So that's the forehead down the nose to the chin. That's the area that tends to get the most oily and therefore your product tends to break up the quickest. Um, so that's the area you want to focus on setting. If you're trying to add a bit more coverage, you're going to want to apply a layer all over the face, but a very, very light layer. Also, if you have dry skin, try to avoid adding adding too much powder. You want to add just the lightest amount, just in the areas where you need it, just a little bit under the eyes, maybe a bit on the forehead and on the chin, and that's pretty much it. Because dry skin, you're going to notice the powder a lot faster, so you just want to be a little bit careful there. We're going to apply it to the sponge, and then we're going to pat it on. You want to apply just the faintest amount of powder underneath the eyes, because again, that's the area that tends to get the most crepey, it's gonna look, um, you're really gonna notice any fine lines or creases or anything if you're applying too much powder to that area. So just like one dab in the powder and then just like press it on very, very gently. And the last step is mascara. It's just going to thicken them. It's going to make your whole eye area pop. It's gonna look big and bold and beautiful. And this is really the only area that I recommend actually purchasing a tool for your makeup. And that is an eyelash curler. You can get them at the drugstore. There's tons of different ones. And that's because having curled lashes is going to create the illusion of longer lashes. It's going to open up your eyes and I'm telling you, it's going to make a world of a difference. So I highly, highly recommend going out and purchasing one of these bad boys. And we're just gonna get all the lashes into there. I know this looks absolutely terrifying. I look like I'm about to chop off my lashes. Promise I won't. And then we're just going to gently press down and you wanna focus on the base of the lash if you keep curling all the way along, you're just gonna curl them around. Instead of lashes that go curl and then straight versus curl and then curl, like it's going to, I don't know, it's gonna defeat the purpose of having really long looking lashes. So I mean, already you can see a little bit of a difference between curled and non-curled. And now into mascara, the one I'm gonna be using today is the Essence Lash Princess. So first of all, I'm wiping off any excess mascara from the tip of the brush into the mascara tube, just because I don't want a lot of extra pieces there, quite honestly, because otherwise I'm gonna get it all over my face. So once that is tapped off, we're gonna look slightly down at a mirror. You're gonna start at the outer corner, wiggle, and then draw it all the way up to the tip, 
and then you're gonna go in towards the middle same thing and this is just gonna create some volume at the lash base where you want your lashes to look really thick and then it's going to coat all the lashes all the way up to the tip and you want to do this slowly I find that that works the best um, a because you're gonna make sure that you're not going to get mascara all over the place and B you're also helping the formula to dry with your lashes lifted like that you can also take a finger and just sort of hold it against the lashes and hold them up I did that for many 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 years and that's just gonna help the formula to dry in that curled position and then it's totally up to you how much you want to apply if you're comfortable with that amount great if you really want to build it up you can certainly do that as well just be careful because not every formula is super buildable now for me I also would like to take whatever is left on the brush and apply a little bit to the lower lashes apply it really really sparsely and there you have it this is the beginner makeup face something that is very easy to do you don't need any brushes if you don't want and it's a great sort of foray into the world of makeup if you are looking for some more intermediate tips then you can continue on from here and I will name other products that I absolutely love if you want to explore a little bit more into the makeup world and if you are a beginner and you are stopping the video here see you in about three months because makeup is addicting save the spot save this video and then you can come back you can learn more together. The first product I recommend for someone looking to build out their makeup collection further is a brow product. You could just do the brow and that's it and it would just completely change your look in my opinion. So there are two different products I recommend and it's going to entirely depend on what you want to do to your brows. If you're looking just to add a little bit of thickness and fullness to the brow, um, I recommend going in with a brow gel, a colored one tinted if you will. This one is by Essence. It is the Make Me Brow, which is a good dupe for the Benefit Give Me Brow. And when you brush this into the brow, it's going to brush this tinted product into the brow very, very sparsely so it almost looks like brush hairs. If you're looking to add some shape to the brow, let's say if you have um, missing areas, so for me the arches of my brows aren't that defined, um, so I like to define those a little bit more, you can go in with a brow pencil. This one is by L'Oreal, it's their brow stylist definer. So I'm going to share a couple of really easy tips and tricks to make your brows pop and make them look very um, put together and well groomed because that's really what we want at the end of the day, right? We want well groomed brows. In terms of where you want your brow shape you want to line it up with the outside of the nostril to the top of the brow that's where it starts and then through the inside iris of the eye that's the arch point and then the outside of the eye and that's where the tip of the brow should be the next tip is you want to take your spoolie brush and you want to brush your brows up and sort of out because that's going to lift and open up the eyes if you're going in with a brow pencil use very light strokes when you're applying this you don't want to use this to like outline your eyebrow perfectly like you're tracing it. No, 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 no. You want to do very feather light little strokes as if you're drawing in little brow hairs. So I'm going to be filling in any areas where I have a little bit of sparseness and I'm going to define my arch a little bit more. And then again, you just want to use little light strokes to fill in any areas where you have any sparseness, if any. Now you can see I have done the other eye. Both eyes are <laughs> hopefully even. So now I'm going to go in with the brow gel and I'm just going to take it out. I'm going to wipe off the excess from the tip again, as I did with the mascara. And we're going to apply it to the brows again, brushing upwards and away from the face. And if you don't want to use a tinted brow gel and you don't want to pencil in your brows at all, then I highly recommend just taking a clear brow gel and just brushing your brows into place. And that's just going to keep them in place and make them look as groomed as possible. So now that we have our brows done, we're going to go into the next product, which is bronzer. The one I'm going to be applying is by NYX is their sun kissed radiant finishing powder, which I use as bronzer. I just find that it gives the most natural, beautiful finish to the skin. And I'm going to be using a big fluffy brush. I like big brushes for applying bronzer because I feel like it gives the most airbrushed look to the skin versus a very pointed condensed one which I feel just cakes it on the face too much and it doesn't look as flawless. And in general you want to apply it to the areas of the face where the sun would naturally hit you. So you'd want sort of the tops of the temples, on the nose, a little bit on the chin, maybe on the cheeks a bit. And this way it's going to look very natural like you've just been out in the sun a little bit and not really muddy and streaky on the face. Next up is eyeshadow and actually this one product serves as two purposes one eyeshadow and two eyeliner and I'm gonna talk about both in this video and the one product that I absolutely love and I've talked about it a ton a ton a ton in my videos is 
the CoverGirl True Naked Nudes Palette. I think this is a phenomenal drugstore find. It is a great palette. It can be used wet or dry. It is a great range of neutrals, shimmery tones, matte tones. It has darker tones for eyeliner and lighter tones for every day. So to start out, I don't want to go too crazy. I want to keep it really, really simple and natural for everyone. So there's obviously a bunch of different ways you can experiment with these shades. And as you get more and more confident with your application and technique, there's a variety of different ways to go with it. But to start out, there are two different ways that you could do this. Number one, you could just apply one of these nice light shades into the inner corners of the eyes. It's gonna create the illusion of looking more awake. It's just gonna brighten up those whites of the eyes and make you look more alert. You can also take the light matte shade, which is the second one in right here, and apply it just underneath the brows, and that's going to make the brows pop, and it's also going to brighten and lighten the eyes up. If you wanna add a little bit more depth to the eye, then I recommend going in with this nice light taupey shade. It's a matte shade and you're going to apply that to the crease. As a general rule, you want to apply a light color to an area that you want to enhance and you want to bring forward and you want to apply a dark color to an area you want to recede or draw less attention to. So I'm going to apply a little bit to this fluffy blending brush here and I'm going to find the crease, which is this little line right here. And you want to dust it very, very lightly into that area. I recommend just going back and forth windshield wiper motion and then blending just like this in a circle. I tend to focus most of the shadow on the outer corner area um, and less so on the inner corner and that's just going to create um, you know a nice wider eye that's like drawn out and this is just going to take a little bit of experimenting until you see what you like best on your eye shape everyone's going to be a little bit different but there you go very natural and very subtle next up is liner and there's a ton of different liners out there and it can be super overwhelming i think for someone who's just getting into eyeliner i'd say just use the same palette as you had before take a small angled brush like this one wet it which is going to increase the intensity of the shadow color and apply it to this matte dark color back here and we're just going to apply it to the outer half of the upper lash line and this is just going to create the illusion that your lashes are much thicker it is a very very forgiving way of doing it start about in the center and we're just going to do a little little bit at a time and you want to apply as close to the lash line as possible so you don't have any gaps between your lashes and the liner in general you want the line to be thinner towards the inside of the eye and then thicker as you move out oh and one other little sneaky tip that I want to share with you guys is that you can also use this palette as a highlight so you can combine like these two sort of shimmery shades and just apply it to the tops of the cheekbones like right here and on top of the brow it's just gonna create a nice pretty easy natural highlight and you don't have to buy a highlighter Bam! And lastly is lip color, and the application of this is pretty straightforward. I'm gonna be using the e.l.f. Um, this is their Glow Lip. This is in perfect pink. You can apply like a lip balm, pretty straightforward. If you're trying to apply a sharper color, you wanna start with the Cupid's Bow and create an X in the center and then smooth it out from there. And that's gonna create a little bit more of a precise lip. And there you have it. There is my beginner and intermediate makeup tutorial for you guys. I hope you guys found this tutorial helpful. Give it a thumbs up if you did. And don't forget to subscribe for more videos every Tuesday and Thursday. I will put all of my social media stuff um, down in the info bar below in case you're interested. And let me know if you guys have any requests for future videos. I love hearing from you guys. Don't forget to check out Tuesday's video if you're more interested in the products and why I chose them and how to pick the right consistencies and formulas and all that fun stuff. That was all in Tuesday's video. And yeah, that is pretty much everything. I hope you guys are having an amazing, amazing week so far and I'll see you guys all in my next video. Love you girls. Mwah.